actually that um, this morning that he died of the yellow plague. Yes. Same mansion. Yeah. Poor fellow. In yeah, sometime in the in the seventh century. Yeah. So this is, yeah, this is St. Mansion's Church, which was established roughly in the 7th century. Mm -hmm. the, the original church would have been a small church here, and then at a certain point when Clon McNoise basically has this, um, has this church, um, they add on this section here. There are stone pieces, carved pieces here that are very unusual and very elaborate and they're just sitting out in in the graveyard this, um, this is just a beautiful piece so beautiful. beautiful isn't it this is what i consider personally insular irish art there's actually a couple of saint mansions oh, right. as well so but this one of lee monaghan is quite well documented There's different parts of the build here. You can see it's a totally different style. The windows, um, the windows, and also the carvings. Um, and there are, you know, folklore traditions here as well. Okay. So this is the well. Yeah. So this is, again, this is, as I was saying before, about the pagan tradition in which the church was built. You know, usually in uh, many of the Christian churches were built mm. in, on pagan sites. And this, this holy well, or this well at the time, would have been a source and it would have been a meeting place for people in the community. Um, Pre-Christian, Christian pagan influences merged together or meshed together. Um, what's, again, what's a very interesting is, is the rag tree. So this is for special intentions. And again, it's part of the folklore. Um, and so people would, who have children or parents or somebody in their community who's sick, they would come and they would pray and they would leave something of theirs onto the site and, 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 and pray in you know, and then hope that that their prayers would be answered. There's a, there's a folklore tradition or story about when Saint Mansion's cow was stolen, and as the the herders, whoever took the, the cow, who had its own story that it gave milk um, all through the year, it never went dry for the local community. But you can see here, these are supposedly the footprints of the cow as he was being taken away oh. by the, you know, the, the herders or whatever. In the so stone? there's, you see the stone, these are, foot, these are footprints here. So, you know, as folklore says. Yeah. Yeah that they were, they were actually footprints. And so they would have built to St. Mella's church where we're going now, they would have put stone down here so that people could walk right through the, all the seasons. So it would have dried up during the, the summertime as the bogs dry up, the water um, depletes, you know, goes, drops down. And they would have put the stone here all the way along the walkway okay. to get to Mella's church. And St. Mella was St. Mansion's mother. Okay. But St. Mansion had taken a vow never to look at a woman, never to look at a female or a woman. 
So they used to meet at some point along here with their backs to each other. Okay. St. Melis South. Shall we go inside? Okay. And this is quite elevated. This, this little site here yes. is yeah. raised yeah. up and a little it bit. Is, it is raised now. Is it man-made raised or is it just an island within the bog? If you look out there, you can actually see the peat oh, yeah. from where we're going to go. Okay. So there would have been a path right through the, the forestry area here that you would have walked from where we are. There's still a remaining part of the path with the, with the sandstone walkway. Now Mellor's Cell, there's a debate on you know, when that was built. Um, some would say that that was built after the main church was built. So, but this, this actually led to the cell and then to the church. From what we can, you know, when we're up in the air and we're looking at it, it's the obvious, it goes straight to the, the cell that would meet the toher, you know, the, the stone uh, walkway mm -hmm. that would bring you to the church. Um, why is it starting to just to grow? To, you know, why are we just... Well, there, you know, there's the moratorium on harvesting means that they can no longer harvest this area. So basically it's not being touched, it's not being, you know, each year uh, the Bordemona machinery would come in here and they would chip the top. They no longer do that, you know, they're no longer taking the peat from here. So eventually, I'm not exactly sure what they're doing with this particular bog, but it could, you know, if they reflood it, then it will just all grow back. Yeah, yeah so you it's know, with dry. All the plant life. It's yeah, dry, that's, yeah, that's yeah. why we're not getting any, yeah. any plant life. Yeah, the ditches are draining. So, that, you know, this, when this was harvested, um, they would drain it. They'd, well, actually, they would have drained it before they ever started harvesting here. So when you drain it, then you pull all the water into a piping system that they would t remove all the water on a continued basis. The actual cuts, the, the actual gaps between let's say the drain the, the two drains here is exactly the size of one of the board pneumonia chipping machines they were they were pulling peat on a continual basis um, all through here and they would chip it and they'd only chip maybe an inch of peat here every year and that would dry over the summer and then they'd have their harvesters and they'd bank it up and then from the banking, they would run a railway line in here, and then they would drop all their, the, the, um, the peat into the line, and it would have gone to Shannon Bridge, the big power station there, or it would have gone to Proban Power Plant. These birch, is that what you said they are? Yeah, they're birch. How, how big will they grow then? Oh, they'll, you know, well, there's a couple right here, but I mean, yeah. they'll grow to, if they, if they have water in that, they'll grow to 30 foot, okay. you know, so. Mm -hmm. So eventually, if we rewet the spot, I mean, if this if, if this all grows back in, all the natural um, plant life will come back into this area. Right, so there's bogs on both sides of this, and this is the, this is really part of the estuary when you think about it. It's it's the area above the bogs on the mm. two sides of the mm -hmm. walkway. Yeah. But that's would have been the pilgrims would have traveled right up through that forestry area, the the estuary uh -huh. there, and all the way up along. Okay. Yeah. So will we be able to walk on a section of it, or we is it can all? Go, you can't get up on, you know, it's it's impossible. I've been up there trying to get up on that. It's yeah, it's yeah. virtually impossible. Again, this has just been left. You know, nobody is really doing anything on this land, as far as you know. You can see the railway line is still intact here. Now, whether they're moving anything along is, you know, I'm not really sure. Mm -hmm. So, so this is what I was saying, this is the beauty of this, this area, is you have the train, you have this, you know, industry going on here that mm -hmm. man has laid down and it's still here, and now the wildflowers have taken over, look, be look behind you here. Uh -huh. and of so course the whole area is becoming, you know, uh, wild again. So we'll go down here a bit and we'll probably be some orchids down here.
Here's a nice one here. Here's if you look at these guys, look at the the uh, sticky on the outside on all of those guys. This is peat. You can feel it was peat. This gives you an idea of the depth of peat that was here because where they put a railway line, they did not harvest peat. But on the two sides, on these sides here, all that peat is gone. Look at the difference in the level of here. This wasn't like this was a natural ridge. This wasn't, it's a peat ridge. Yeah. So, you know, everything is coming back up and, and it just blurs. I mean, I think this is the cool thing here. It just blurs the man-made to the natural now. Mm. Yeah, beautiful. They're wonderful, you know, they're lines and they're put down not as artwork. They're not put down as as they're as installations. Yeah. They're just man, you know, solving the problem of moving peat out of there. But now that they're gone, you've got these beautiful rust, you know, rusted lines in a landscape. Mm -hmm. A couple of inches here. It yearly so this has been going on since <laughs> yeah this is probably 1950 uh, you know again mm -hmm. i'm not really sure but it's pr it would probably be the industrial harvesting really kicked in in the 1950s mm -hmm. so what are you talking 70 years of harvesting because they've only just stopped yeah, yeah. the green can be added against the i rice. know it's it's the beauty of it all these little plants that are reseeding yeah. themselves So this is yet another bog, you know, so it gives you some idea of the vast bogs. There's 50,000 hectare acres of mm. bogs in the Bog of Allen. And it's really uh, soft now. Uh, so this so this is what your work is about, these sort of little, yeah. little remnants is, of... Re yeah, the remnants, the way man is engaged with that landscape. And in a lot of cases, they've just left it, mm. you know. Um, or there's a storyline, there's a history there that will be either lost, I mean, no different from the monastic sites. You know, once they were disengaged, once, you know, they've left remnants. Whoop. That is bug. Okay. There you go. Uh, just up here. So, what you have here is that's the depth of harvesting that they've done. Yeah. Some, they've some huge in. amount we've of peat in. has been removed from this landscape yeah, to, and we've to power it. our electricity. Yeah. You know, and now we're, we're looking, you know, and that can no longer happen. Yeah. Um, mm. You know, and it's, an import, it's important. Now the peat is important as a carbon sink. Yeah. You know, mm. so that change in our attitudes, that change in the power, the way modern society is thinking also is very important. Mm. You know, that connection with climate change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh
1800s. So a mass path. A mass path. So instead of what we drive, well, we're going to drive all the way around to, for them to get to mass, they'd have to drive or walk or take horse and trap all the way around because of the bog, because they couldn't go through the bog. There is actually a gate someplace hidden in here that went through fields that opened up that you could actually get to the church walking straight to it. Mm, okay. So that's the highest point I've been told. Okay. Of, you know, as we go along. It's interesting because it's a really sharp looking ridge. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Church, which was uh, the nunnery attached to Clamic Noise. A lot of carving. It was built in the 1100s, and it was that same period of time when there was this engagement between the Irish influences and the Norwegian influences. What was very prevalent in in Norway with the great beasts. So you these these dragon-like figures here, and the dragons coming in and that was that whole idea of and they're hatching catching on to something which is probably a snake which is evil and then of course we have the lovely chevron forms that date back to you know um, primitive man when they use the chevron forms for decorative work mm. it's so beautiful and then the imagery is is very interesting you can see th um, all different small animals uh, Sheila and a gig there as well you have some wonderful carvings on the side areas here as well. Again, that that geometric, and this is you know kind of going right back to the to the earlier style of the insular Irish with the geometric patterns, which are more like meditative patterns in a lot of way. Um, interesting that they would have had a shield in the gig. Where is she? She's the one with her legs over her head. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good girl. Ha, 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 ha.